John Byrne starts publishing with indie creator-owned titles in the 90s, kicks it off with John Byrne's Next Men, Danger Unlimited, and then Babe, uh, probably coming off the success of She-Hulk. So we're looking at a pretty unusual John Byrne comic, but good enough that he did a couple volumes of this in the uh, 90s downward spiral of comics. This is one of his last creator-owned titles. Hello and welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Before we begin, I want to remind everybody of Cartoonist Kayfabe Comic Book Christmas in July. The last Saturday in July, we invite all of our audience to take some comic books and stock them in those little local lending libraries in their neighborhood, and let's grow some new comic book readers. This is the second year in a row that we've invited our audience to do this. Uh, post those pictures. Those lending libraries always look good in photos, so post those on your social media with comics peeking through that front window, and let's try to continue showing comics to new readers. We also remind everybody that we have a Cartoonist Cafe Patreon. Three different levels there will get you access to our videos first, ahead of everyone else, to give you a leg up on the Kayfabe effect. And at the King Kayfaber level, you get to sit in while we record these videos and add your thoughts to the conversation. So without further ado, let's dive into John Byrne's Babe. As the uh, legend icon says, John Byrne strikes again. I've often mentioned that he refers to his fans as burn victims. <laughs> this may be one of those. Be careful with this book, everybody. This may be one that uh, will burn you a little bit. He even refers to them in this issue as uh, burn victims. So I found this recently. I refound it, I should say. I bought these whenever they were being published. At the time in the 90s, I was a huge burn mark. I loved Next Men. I bought Danger Unlimited. And so when he had a new series coming out, I picked it up. I got rid of it whenever I purged my collection and recently added it because I found it for 50 cents and thought, I don't remember this book, but I kind of remember the title. So let's see what it's all about. And of course, burn one of his big titles was She-Hulk at Marvel Comics. So I think you're building on that. And it's 1994. Those bad girls are starting to become popular. So let's try everything because I would guess that John Byrne, known as selling books, is starting to see those numbers plummet along with the rest of the comics industry. So you're chasing anything at Prob that point. Yeah, probably much lower than he's ever seen. Maybe uh, dooms Doomsday uh, numbers, man, from, from Charlton. Wow, that's, that's, that's an interesting comparison here. And he is hooked up with this Cody painter who I can't believe that uh, he lets him sign his name on the cover. Not below Byrne's name, no Byrne at all yeah. listed on that front cover. But he would do this with some of his next men where you would get to see the original black and white line art on the back cover and then this painted version on the front cover. Definitely that bleeding edge state of the art. Look what computers can do kind of stuff, right? Like, is that, is that computer generated? I don't know. 1994, that's a pretty good paint job if it is digital. I see a blue line right here. So it makes me think this is some type of a blue line method of more traditional painting, but I don't know. It's it's bizarre. Like, it surprised me back then that he was going for this. Yeah. And it surprises me even more looking at it today and thinking like, boy, your your name isn't even on there. <laughs> I mean, minus the, the big John Byrne at the top. So yeah, Something like this, it, it, it kind of makes sense because you have your Venus de Milo or, or whatever, Renaissance painting. So, you know, you Maybe have a little aesthetic. more relevant here than on all the uh, Danger Men's Unlimited and, and Next Men covers. Absolutely. But <laughs> interesting design here on your inside covering. The coloring by Matt Webb. I think the coloring's pretty good because this is your early digital coloring, but there are a lot of flat colors. Yeah. So I don't see it competing with the line art, but it still has some, you'll see some gradations, some digital effects. And to me, pretty good for early digital coloring because it's subtle. It's it's no different than the complete production job on like the Wonder Woman's really, and which would be the same deal, kind of flat color. You know, he's he's a real nostalgia hound kind of guy. Uh, so So he wants... He wants that classic approach. This is such a bizarre opening to me. Like his art at this point, I don't want to say that it's hurried, but he is doing the lettering himself. And it does feel like he's getting to that point of just like quick marks, whatever tools he is using. You know, it's kind of there's a big heavy black tool and then it's quick marks. You can see that he's like scraping paper and, and probably adding a little bit of white media to get that water effect. But it feels like this is a almost an answer to Sin City, this first page. The rest of the issue doesn't really follow suit. But this first part feels like he's having some fun with his buddy uh, Frank's style. <laughs> yeah, you know he's he's such a such a good drawer, and and he's 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 really figured out how to how to make economic pages. Uh, and it's you could reverse engineer. You could just keep flipping. Well, I do want to pose a question to our audience. 
Does this dude have a mustache, everybody? Oh, dude. Look at page one here and tell me that that's not a mustache. That that exact lighting scenario is the reason why whenever I see Loki without a mustache, doesn't make sense. Because, like, the uh, Marvel Universe Series 2 cards, I never really, like, saw, saw Loki in the comics or anything. So that, I just had that one image to go by. It was uplit like this. And it is accurate lighting. Like, yes, that top part of the brow, that's, that's, uh, it's a plane that's not being hit by the light. But maybe that's not the first shot that you do of your protagonist. I also want to know what the heck is this car, everybody? Because I see a different car in the front than in the back. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I don't think he has the car collection for reference that maybe Frank Miller has at his disposal. But we get right into the action, man. He's coming home from a party. This guy's like a, a talent agent and naked woman in the middle of the road in this rainstorm, torrential downpour, man. Love the rain effects. Like all those little circles would be a pain in the ass, I think, to ink and draw. But He's quick really with communicates it. it. Yeah, he's real quick with it. Like, look at that. It just scribbles. So much crazy texture. But it's definitely from that period of, of burn art where he is just... He, he might have done, you know, 100 pages that month. Yeah, definitely fast. And it carries over into Wonder Woman, but... Yeah. I, I'm trying to think of the time frame for Wonder it's Woman. It's some years I later. I guess it's 96, 95, yeah. 96. So not, not too far down the road. Um, and you wonder, like, is this is this how he gets Wonder Woman? Because he's doing another actually don't know what this book is if this is like a hero book although she's super powered as we'll see in this first issue but not a lot of answers otherwise but you wonder if this is your audition for wonder woman he grids off all of his panels that have perspective and you could kind of feel it you could kind of see it in these things man it's kind of cool this is your early digital effect photoshop still has this where you can do a gradient but you do the middle point so you get both sides as like the the parallel uh, gradient It's so funny. I still fool around with that gradient, so maybe the joke's on me 30 years later. But nevertheless, drops off this uh, naked woman at the police station. It's not his problem, and he heads home or to his office couch where he is sleeping. Don't think he's very successful as a theatrical agent. (laughs) His gal Friday opens the door midway through the day to find him in here, decides after uh, he doesn't show up at work, maybe he's actually sleeping it off. And sure enough, there he is. In some... uh... That little, he's got like a thong or something, man. He's got his girl, girl panties on. Right. And basically your old private eye kind of setup, right? You've Pretty got your, your office that you sleep in and uh, your secretary who's very capable and kind of runs the business out front. And what does he see in the morning newspaper? That girl that he rescued was picked up by the top producer in Hollywood. And of course, a guy that, you know, our agent does not get along with. Can't stand to think that he has this girl whenever our agent passed on her look at that palatial estate yeah it's funny too like thinking of this as la because i don't know about that yeah i mean like this yes you know like uh, like there are people that got some crazy land like that up in the hills it's so big but you don't need no citadel it's revealing to the style because it really does look like he has one pen it feels like the Hearst Mansion or something. Right. You know, you ever see it in like the, the, uh, uh, out in its own mountain range? The, 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 the Winchester house. This ad made me think, though, we ought to cover this at some point. Jim Silk has one of the most amazing professional careers of anybody in comics, and comics is just like one element. Uh, be interested to look at that. I have this, uh, I believe, in my magazine boxes as well. This video is brought to you by the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. There are three different levels to suit all of your needs. At the King Kayfaber top level, you will get access to all of our videos first and earliest to help curb the Kayfabe effect. You'll be the first one in line to buy those books. And at the King Kayfaber level, you get to sit in on our recording sessions. So welcome to the Brain Trust. It is also brought to you by the books that we make. The books that you can get from me include Hulk Grand Design, The Plain Janes, and Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive. These are all available currently in print. My upcoming releases include Street Angel Princess of Poverty, which will collect all of the Street Angel comics not in Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive, and True Crime Funnies, my most recent self-published comic book. You can get this at my Patreon or at my website. Ed Piscor has a big year coming up, starting with the hip-hop family tree Omnibus coming out this fall. You can pre-order that and put your name on a copy now. It collects all the hip-hop family tree comics in one handsome volume along with 140 extra pages. So reserve that one today. X-Men Grand Design. All three volumes of X-Men Grand Design will be collected in one trade paperback this fall. Again, pre-order that one today. Some of these Grand Designs have gone out of print, so this is a way for you to read X-Men Grand Design conveniently. 
and the third season of Red Room Crypto Killers is currently being published. You can get that at your local comic book shop. There are also two trade paperback volumes in print and available for order wherever you buy books and comics. And now back to our video. So here is our super producer and he, he has no interest in our theatrical agent, Rowan. You know, that guy is just very, very low on the totem pole and insignificant knack compared to this dude. Like, does he have teeth? Like, is he the Corinthian? Oh, funny. Doesn't that look like that. mouths? It does. Is it? You wonder, like, what is he draw? What is that supposed to be? Is it sunglasses or something? With shines? I assume it's sunglasses. You can see a little bit of dimensional quality for the glasses there. It really looks like mouths. This is practically a Liefeld mouth. It absolutely is. Do you feel like he's cutting promos at all times <laughs> against everybody? But it feels like this is an image mouth. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's, you know, he's Lightbox Gideon. <laughs> <laughs> Just needs to let this hair grow out a little bit and braid it. You'll be there. All right, so our guy Rowan is climbing the fence to sneak in because he was turned away at the gate. And not clear exactly what's happening except dressing her up, thinks there's some kind of talent there. This is a tall Amazon-like woman, uh, beautiful woman that doesn't even know her name, doesn't really speak English, just says babe over and over. So I guess he sees something there that he can mold into a potential star or moneymaker. And uh, our guy is like... I got to get in there by hook or by crook. Climbs up to the window, and uh, before he can get her to open up the window, she just breaks through the wall. Yeah, with a smile on her jibs. It's such a weird, like, this was a weird read for me. Because I don't remember any of these details. And, like, going through this, it's like, I'm kind of curious where the story goes. This is the only issue I have of it now, uh, and I yeah. don't remember it from my childhood, so. Yeah, it's It's aliens. Is it? Yeah. Did you go further <laughs> further down this? I, th I thought we were Did supposed you get to check it all out. Drawn into the babe rabbit hole. You chose it, man. <laughs> yeah, this is one that. Is this suitable for cartoonist kayfabe comic book Christmas in July? This may pass <laughs> back out of my possession soon. So he and Babe hit the road, man. They're on the run. Not sure why there's like a police officer stationed here, but doesn't really do anything except stand there and say hey. And as they get back to this gigantic wall around the citadel, she just pushes it down. Keeps going. I can't decide if Rowan is selling this appropriately or not. I feel like you see somebody push that wall down with one hand. I don't know what the reaction... I, I think running the other direction might be the appropriate <laughs> action. But instead, loads her up in the car and off they go. To the waterbed motel. Is this funny? Is, is this burn bit? Is this a comedy? <laughs> I can't tell. I need a laugh track. All right. Yeah, tell, tell us. Ring a bell. <laughs> ring a bell when we're supposed to laugh. And then we have this kind of stuff, right? Like, let's just repeat some panels. That's the easy page. And that, I believe, is a uh, is a photocopy. If you look at some of the, the folds on the shirt, they're repeated exactly. So. Oh, yeah. No, of course. Yeah, yeah. He just pasted, pasted that stuff up. So he's he's really figured out how to get a page done quick. One of the intriguing parts in here is she, again, is just saying babe anytime he tries to talk to her and eventually spits out a regular word balloon. And that's the only time we see it. So she's back to her babe thing and we're kind of... Uh, mostly that's the extent of what we're getting in this first issue. No real answers. That high-ruling high, uh, producer has sent his goons over to turn over the office in an attempt to try to find this woman. I don't know... If she's more valuable now that she's busted some holes in the mansion and, and suddenly it's like this could be a draw. But it creates a, I think, suitable setup. Well, there's a fetish for that. You can put it in a certain kind of movie. That's true, too. I remember getting contacted about drawing giant women comics mm -hmm. by somebody who paid a page rate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I, 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 I knew, I knew it, uh, alas, who uh, would shoot in front of a guy, paid dudes. To like stand in front of a green screen and look up and go, no, please, no, and, 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 and then shoot him like use Adobe Premiere or something, and then just like go like this, this like she's like holding something, and just uh, you fucking small cock piece of shit, and oh no, please. I felt like this. She's looking up a name in the phone book and just points to this Donald Stevens. I, I, I kept looking and being like, Dave Stevens, Dave Stevens. Yeah. How do you not put Dave Stevens in your L.A. phone book? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're doing a girl, like a good girl art kind of issue. I feel like you got to mention Dave Stevens in there as an inside joke. You know, that's the thing. Like, didn't like, happen. like, I don't know what this is and I don't know what Bern is, is, is quite thinking. Uh, I, I don't know if he's trying to like keep contemporary with the times or like, so it's not funny. 
there's not much action. There's not, like it's a total hedge. It's it's like those boring trauma movies that don't have any gore or anything like that. Like those Battle of Love's Return trauma flicks and shit. Yeah, it's very strange because like, okay, we point to an address. It's this mysterious woman, but she points to an address. So let's go to the address and see what's going on there. This guy lost a daughter in a plane crash recently. That daughter is not Babe, but maybe there's some intrigue. Again, I, I don't have the rest of the series in front of me, so I'm not sure whether that pays off. But it's almost just like filler at this point. You know, I don't know that we get anything out of that experience. No. He takes her to a costume shop, he being the agent who is now figuring out, like, I'm going to sell this somehow. This woman is super strong. Let me make some money finally. And again, driving home the point of how unsuccessful he is, this is his secretary's car who says he doesn't really even pay her. The secretary does suggest this is not the right costume to put Babe in and uh, dresses her a little bit differently for, I guess, a David Letterman appearance. Is, yeah. that, is that what we're seeing Yeah, here? look at him. It's so funny because he doesn't come out and say it, but who he's else got, is this? He's got the gap in his teeth. The, the trademark teeth. So opens up the curtain, and our Dave Letterman is surprised to see an average-looking woman, again, his secretary, playing an average piano ditty and doesn't really understand what the heck is, why is this on my television show? I could have got somebody with more talent or prettier to be here. And then Babe makes her presence known by lifting up the stage with piano, piano player, and talk show host all on top. What a way to throw the secretary under the bus, huh? <laughs> yeah, insult her while, while we're there. And uh, that's basically the end of issue one. I guess we do see aliens. Yeah. As, as you mentioned, Ed, as you uh, gave away you gave away the, the, the spoiler alert, right? So, I, like, this wasn't in what I read, so, they, like, did this have any uh, relevance? Like, does this illuminate anything? Not really. It says that he started working on this idea in 1990, and some of the visual characteristics ended up in other places, like Next Men. There's a character that was the original drawing of this sort. Wanted it to be something that doesn't look like She-Hulk, and... Um, that's basically how we get to this. What this is, I don't know. I, I I would read another issue. I'll put it that far. I don't know if I'd get beyond issue two or not, but I would read another issue based on the reading experience for me was fine. It was kind of strange. It does make me wonder, like you say, like what is John Byrne thinking at this point? Because he is getting older. Cells are plummeting for everybody, not just him, but I, I'm sure that he's mostly concerned with his cells. And you just wonder, like, is this just throwing stuff against the wall and seeing what sticks Yeah. in a time period when nothing is sticking? Not just burn, but anybody. You know, it seems like all the cells are plummeting across the uh, comic book world. So it's it's tortoise in the hair stuff, man, because you got Mignola over there just doing his uh, his Hellboy, probably not selling too much for a little while and then just fucking sticking with it, really turning it into something like there, there's a real lesson there. Yeah, it's here's your burn victim, by the way, plug. Burn victims interested in obtaining original art by John Byrne, contact Jim Warden. Including Gary Cody's paintings. Right. Wonder what one of those things cost then and what you could sell it for now. <laughs> How about this for a sweet legend ad? Yeah, the gang's all there, dude. Yeah, 1994. Makes me wonder how far along we are on any of these books. Do you remember when Hellboy starts? Is 1994 the beginning of most of these books? Yeah, I don't I mean, know. Sin City obviously has an earlier beginning in Concrete, but... And this and this is Dame to Kill for. So we're there. That's, uh, that's actual Martha Washington, so that's like the second round of that. Yeah, that ad is, is here for Martha Washington Goes to War. Yeah, okay, so that's like my era. So maybe year two or so of, uh, of Legend... Maybe about a year in. Yeah. Okay, okay, you know exactly what it is, man. If uh, if the Legend pull-out poster is like issue 30 of uh, Wizard. 31, I think. Th 31, 37 is my first issue. So it's really seven months. Se it's, it's very short period yeah, of time, man. You, you should have been on this, Ed. This yeah. should have been in your wheelhouse. He, was, he wasn't my like even close to my favorite dude at, at that point, man. And certainly this stuff... Now, I fucked with uh, Namor, and I messed with uh, West Coast Avengers. Namor might have been like 1990. 90 or 91. Yeah, that was one that I picked up with, with issue one. How about the satin Next Man jacket? If anybody has this in the audience, <laughs> post some pictures of that and tag us, because I would be very, very curious to see what that looks like in real life. See how that held up? Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, didn't hate this issue, but it's just weird. It's really, really strange. Yeah. And it, it does make me think like it's a sign of that time period and a sign of like Byrne just being off the reservation. I don't imagine there was a lot of editorial feedback for what he was doing at Legend. I think Dark Horse was happy to have a creator of his caliber there. Absolutely. And I mean, like he's been writing and drawing at this point for well over 10 years. So has something in mind, but, I, you know, maybe a little out of touch in terms of pop culture. There's a there's a component that must be in the back of his mind because you because you look at this stuff and it is it is not labored the way that like all of his Marvel stuff is labored or his DC stuff. And you're not getting paid the same way that you are with Marvel or DC. So so like the the effort that he would apply to an issue of uh, Marvel Comics or DC Comics, I just I, I think he's splitting his energy a whole lot. And I, I just don't know what what great can come from that. You know, like the Mignola thing is he he invested in himself in the appropriate way where the level of craft and and determination and discipline that he that Mignola put toward Hellboy was equal or greater than what he did for Marvel or DC. Same thing with Frank Miller, I would say. Uh, but but I I can't say that for this work. Yeah, Byrne worked so fast. Like he was always working on two or three books. Pretty much it's not a forever. virtue. Yeah, it's it's just not a virtue. You know, like it, certainly when when you got to like do all the parts yourself and create the whole world yourself, like it needs a couple of drafts. You know, it need, it needs it needs uh, somebody in your life to say no. I was looking at this little specific architecture, just this kind of like the arch, and thinking like that's that's a Wally Wood like really stripped down version of the Wally Wood spaceship interiors. You know how they would yeah. be like, they'd be round and then you'd have your perspective of the things, the pipes and wires and things. And it's kind of that, but just like really fast. But it, I version mean, of the, it. yeah, the direct correlation would be the, um, the dark Phoenix issue where Wolverine gets thrust into the sewer. Cause like when Terry Austin, it's the same shapes, you know, mm-hmm. but when Terry, Terry Austin is inking that shit, it's hard as hell, you know? Like, it's really, really sick. It also makes me wonder, whenever we looked at that Miller interview about Ronan and how Miller's saying, like, most of inking is different once you get a better production, better paper yeah, and things. Yeah. And I wonder if, like, some of this is some legacy of newsprint sure. cheap reproduction. You know what? You're probably 100% right, man. I bet that would look real nice on, on a, like, a gray newsprint. Yeah. I was really following Byrne at this time. So, you know, I was looking at these tools and I was kind of conscious of him switching tools and getting into this, what I think of as probably markers, something very fast here. Um, interesting artifact though. And like I said, if I find an issue two in the uh, future dollar bins, I will be picking that one up. Yeah, man. But that's all I got for uh, babe number one. <laughs> okay. Favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can notify you when new vids are available. Cartoonist Kayfabe comic book Christmas in July is forthcoming or just passed in uh, in very recent times. We're going around to our free little lending libraries in our neighborhoods. We're stuffing them full of comic books and we are creating new readers that way. Uh, the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon is where you can join us to mitigate the Kayfabe effect. The King Kayfabers are hanging out with us in the chat right now. A couple, three dozen of them right at this very moment. And uh, they're, they're getting access to all the videos that we produce before anybody else. Ultimately, the vids are brought to you by the books that we make. And uh, this holiday season, it's going to be a big deal. Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is coming to you. Uh, it's collecting all four volumes of Hip Hop Family Tree, 140 pages of extras. And it's all inside this nice, beautiful hardcover. This is what the cover is going to look like. Not the only holiday effort that's coming out. X- X-Men Grand Design is being collected in total in a trade paperback. Uh, in time for the Christmas season. Uh, Right now, Red Room is the focus, and there are two trade paperbacks of that out there in the wild. Uh, There are two issues of Crypto Killers as of this recording, third one on the way really, really soon. That is a hot key because the characters in the backup story are going to be part of my daily comic strip. Uh, Jimmy, what comics do you got going on? I have Hulk Grand Design, The Plain Janes, and Street Angel Deadly Scroll Live are available right now. Coming out this fall will be Street Angel Princess of Poverty from Image Comics. And together with Deadly Scroll Live, you'll get the complete Street Angel collection. So add those two books to your shelf if you haven't already. Uh, True Crime Funnies, my recent self-published comic book, is out of print in physical form. But there are PDFs available on my website. And you can also read all of those comics and all of my future new comics on my Patreon, patreon.com slash jimrug. Thank you.
some good ways to support the channel. There are other ways. Jimmy, let the people know. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, hats, mugs, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. There you have it. All good ways to support the channel. Give them those marching orders, Jimmy. We'll be on our way. Read more comics.